Hello and welcome to the Poetry Exchange. I'm Michael Schaefer and I'm excited to be introducing this seventh edition of the podcast, which has a truly international feel to it. We have new listeners in Japan, Korea and Guatemala who've recently tuned in, so welcome to all of you and indeed to everyone who's become a follower of the project and the podcast. Whether you follow us on SoundCloud or iTunes or another podcast platform, do make sure you press subscribe so that you get each edition of the podcast as it comes along. And if you've been enjoying listening, then do help us to spread the power of Poems as Friends by sharing the link. Those of you who've been listening already will know that we talk to people about the poem that's been a friend to them and create a gift in exchange, a reading of their poem inspired by the conversation. This encounter is an exciting one as it will feature our first poem in translation, The Moth, by the Czech poet and scientist Miroslav Holub. Although the exchange took place here in the UK at the Wise Words Festival, our visitor, Claudia, is from Colombia, and so the layers of voice and language that are involved in this conversation are very rich indeed. Our thanks to Bloodaxe Books for their permission to feature the poem, and indeed to Claudia for giving us permission to share the conversation with you in this way. There are a number of useful links on the description page, so do take a look at those, and the poem itself can be found there too if you want to follow the text as you listen. You'll be hearing myself and Fiona Bennett talking about The Moth by Miroslav Holub, the poem that's been a friend to Claudia. The Moth The Moth Having left its pupa in the galaxy of floor greens and pots of rancid dripping, the moth discovers in this topical darkness that it's a kind of butterfly. But it can't believe it. It can't believe it. It can't believe that it's a tiny, flying, relatively free moth. And it wants to go back, but there's no way. Freedom makes the moth tremble forever. That is 22 hours. Great, thank you. <laughs> Miroslav Holland. Where is he? Uh, Czech Republic. He was an immunologist and poet. So he basically started with science and he worked on vaccines and everything. And then he decided to combine poetry with science. So most of his poems have like, yeah, scientific terminology. How, how did you come across this poem? Mm. When, when did you encounter it? It was at uni because um, I used to write some complicated words, like um, brought them from science and linguistics, because this is what I like. So most of my <laughs> classmates like, what's that? They didn't understand that. But then uh, my supervisor just um, recommended me to, she lent me the book. So I connect with him a lot uh, because he, he talks about freedom and, and some, yeah, some terminology. I, I use it in my poems. So I really fell in love with him. The moth is like everywhere I go, I just share it and I share it with my students as well. So I said, okay, for I am the moth and this animal represents me. So what is your animal? So they think about the animal and then I just change some things and leave it spaces so they can complete their own poem. Can I ask you to tell us a bit more about the ways in which you see yourself as the moth? Uh, well, <laughs> I really love this kind of process like the transformation behind the butterflies and some insects because they, they, they're cycles, so I'm interesting in that. And because being here, we don't have seasons in Colombia. You don't have? Seasons. Okay. So every time that changes, it's like, I feel so strange. It's like, but I'm moving to another planet. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and I start adapting again. So when, for example, when summer is, was over, I said, ah, I survived to summer. But then I had to change it like to autumn, it's like, no, no, it's like I'm not prepared. Mm. When I feel that I'm adapted, it's not, the, then the, the, other, the next change comes. Okay. So it's just crazy. <laughs> so I felt this as a way to see seasons and how my mind is so stiff and structured and it's not 
used to changes, mm -hmm. like natural changes. And then, because the moth having left its pupa, I, I left my pupa also because mm -hmm. I left my comfort zone mm -hmm. in my country. And I'm king here and this process of being just to get rid of this pupa, it seems easy, but it's not. I mean, like, you have to leave many things behind, like a new being. And this is how I feel here in England, in this moment, mm -hmm. when I'm doing something strange in another language. The things that I write is like, this is, tells the story of this struggling with languages and how I can control my own voice and mm -hmm. trying to find it. <laughs> but it's difficult to find it between two languages so but also my all the pattern the mental patterns the prejudices that i have about people about life in this galaxy i really like like this image because it's, for me it's the galaxy of words of new people you don't know what's there but there's something there so it's like a mystery mm -hmm. to discover yeah, and this rancid dripping is like, for me, it's like the past. Something, some like souvenirs from the past, but also like uh, hard memories. So, but the moth left it, so she's brave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I call it she. she. <laughs> um, and I love the word discovers because mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's like I'm so afraid of uncertainty. I'm always scared of new things. But it's just in the darkness where I can see, where I can realize that there is light. So there is no light without darkness. It's just in the darkness when I went through like a difficult time in my life. But here it was like another darkness because I was struggling with the new language. So I felt like I was handicapped <laughs> because of the language and because of the knowledge that I didn't have. But then I realized that uh, it was not about the uh, knowledge, it's just everybody has it, his or her, her own process. And you, mm -hmm. I had stories to tell. Mm -hmm. So I discovered in that, in that darkness that, I mean, I had very high standards, but then I had to just put them down mm -hmm. and just be me and accept my limitations, and, but also my strengths. So through the process, I realized, and thanks to many people, they made me see that I had a strength that it was my mother tongue. So, and I could use it also when I was writing. So now I'm just putting there because this is me. So I couldn't believe that. <laughs> That's why right. I couldn't believe that I could fly. Because I saw myself as the ugly moth. And many people just want to see a moth, they just want to kill it. Mm. But then I I took a moth in my hands and said, it's just beautiful because it also has patterns and mm. it has its own, its own colors and it can fly. I realized that it could fly as well. We're going to pause the conversation briefly this week, just to mention again the ways in which you can support the project and the podcast. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, don't forget to subscribe and also you can find us on Twitter and Facebook where details of all of our work with Poems as Friends is posted. You can also be in touch directly through our website, thepoetryexchange.co.uk. We're going to be running some exchanges in March and if you'd like to come and visit us in either London or Manchester to tell us about the poem that's been a friend to you, then please do get in touch. Finally, as you get to the end of this week's conversation, do stay tuned as there's also the chance to hear a new poem that's been created in response to this conversation that you're listening to now. Back to Claudia. I saw myself as a tiny, yeah, a relatively free moth because through my writing I, I feel that I am free. Well, at the beginning it was another problem because I wanted to see me, to say many things but I... I feel afraid of saying the things that I felt, but then little by little I just allow myself to be there and mm. didn't care about what people said and I could find like a kind of freedom there while writing. And sometimes I want to go back. I wanted to go back to my language and just write in Spanish and that's it. <laughs> but there was no way. I mean, I couldn't return. 
So I'm writing, and I came here to study, so so I have to make peace uh, with English and accept it. And when I embrace it again and I forgive myself for having a Spanish, uh, a Colombian accent, and for having a different, a weird English, then I could start again and and then, yeah, it's like the freedom makes it not tremble forever. And sometimes it's just two seconds, sometimes it's just one hour. Mm. Mm. And it's like eternity, but uh, the eternity of this moment. So I really like it. <laughs> this is like the perfect poem for you. Uh, you have a complete connection mm. yeah. to every phase of this image. It's wonderful <laughs> to hear someone talk about a poem like that. That they actually fit inside. Mm. And actually it's funny because the imagery of being like inside the pupa or... You fit inside this poem, your own story, completely. Yes. You know? When did you first um, get it? At the end of November. So nearly a year. Mm -hmm. So quite early in your journey of writing in English, yes. in your course here. So it's been with you. Yeah, for a while. <laughs> through, through, this, through this change mm -hmm. that you've been going through this year. That's wonderful. Mm. Can I ask you to talk a bit more about that last stanza in fact, freedom mm. makes the moth tremble forever. When I, the first time that I read it, I didn't know what tremble was, so I used like shake, but it's not the same. <laughs> because uh, when you shake, it's like something, I shake my hands, it's something that you do consciously. Yeah. But tremble is just like a reaction of yeah. something. You don't know when you are going to tremble. So, I mean, the moth left its pupa. I left my pupa. And freedom, it's there, it's outside, it's outside the pupa. But um, as time, you don't know when the moment is going to finish or how long is it going to be there. And tremble with time is like uncertainty. Sometimes I feel trapped, sometimes I feel free. So it depends on the situation. Mm -hmm. I like to plan many things. And this is how I realized. This is the first time in my life that I don't have like a contract for the next year. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do. So I was mm -hmm. so worried about that. That's mm -hmm. why freedom is like, what I'm going to do with this freedom? That's why it's like, mm -hmm. I tremble. <laughs> I tremble. It's still something that's kind of, present and yeah. resonates for you now mm -hmm. isn't it it's not a question of having gone through a process and come out the other end and it's a friend that you still holds your hand yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes when i when i look at the mirror and i see i don't know if i can it's like i see the moth <laughs> and <Yeah>. sort <laughs> it's okay and i remember that it's a kind of butterfly mm. so if it has wings, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it reminds me that there's no way back. So it's fine to look at the past, to see all the things that I have done. And there are many things that I can do, but I don't know how to organize them. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why uncertainty is like a pressure sometimes for me. Mm -hmm. So I have like many ideas, but I don't know how to put them in order. Yeah, but no, I, I love this poem because it's inspiring and sometimes it's like a mantra <laughs> and it's just powerful for me. And also I think it's great that it, it has, you're right, it is a friend now that you're holding on to in this moment of uncertainty, but it's also great that you have already had one cycle of the moth yes. and the butterfly and it feels to me that you, in being able to talk so specifically through the detail of this image, that that's a very solid thing, that connection that you've made. And so all the uncertainty that is in the darkness <laughs> will exist, but you are very, you're very clear in what you understand and what you, what you know to be your own truth and your own way of moving through those changes. I like a, a word that you used, I think, it, uh, earlier, mm -hmm. adaptation. I think it was when you were talking about the 
the seasonal changes. Yeah. And, uh, mm. Sort of get used to those and adapt to the new season. Um, which, uh, you know, in itself is a, obviously a cyclical thing. And it's, uh, but yeah, that idea of adaptation, it, it's, it sort of simultaneously requires, as you have so brilliantly already done, to, at the same time, let go of something, take something new, move into the darkness, speak another language, move across the ocean, uh, <laughs> simultaneously make all that change, but at the same time stay true to something that is inside you. I guess there's a thing, yes, I mean, it's repeated, isn't it? Believe, believe, believe. You know, that yeah. thing of believing in yourself, I suppose. Yeah, I think that, as you were saying, well, yeah, I really like this idea of cycle and transformation mm. and also mutation. Because mm. when you adapt, you have to, yeah, it's like another mutation mm. yourself. Mm. Yeah, even though it left its pupa, but it was there, so the DNA is the same. The conditions mm. change, but this is you. And mm. that's what the moth is trying to believe, that mm. something there. <laughs> Confidence, self-confidence, self-love, self-acceptance, something mm -hmm. like that. That's mm -hmm. why, yeah, the repetition is very important to me. Because, like, yeah, believe it. Believe mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it mm -hmm. doesn't matter how many changes you have to go through. This is life, and this is how things work. And this is what I like about Canterbury, because I'm just surrounded by nature. Mm -hmm. And I love to observe. Insects, so here I, am, I feel like I'm a, I'm a child at school, they're just exploring with bugs and they teach me a lot, like simple things about life, mm. adaptation, just movement mm. and continuous changes, yeah. um, it's like just move, keep on moving. What a wonderful experience for us to hear this from you, Claudia, yeah. really yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Is that it in Spanish? Yeah. Before you go, could Would we hear right? your, you read it in Spanish? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> la polilla. La polilla, en cuanto deja su pupa en la galaxia de granos de harina y sartenes de gracia rancia, la polilla descubre en esta tópica oscuridad que es una especie de mariposa, pero no lo puede creer. No lo cree. No puede creer que es una polilla diminuta, voladora, relativamente libre. Y quiere regresar, pero no hay forma. La libertad hace temblar a la polilla para siempre. Es decir, 22 horas. Great. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Moth. The moth, having left its pupa in the galaxy of flower grains and pots of rancid drippings, the moth discovers in this topical darkness that it's a kind of butterfly. But it can't believe it. It can't believe it. It can't believe that it's a tiny, flying, relatively free moth. And it wants to go back. But there's no way. Freedom makes the moth tremble forever. That is, 22 hours. That was Michael Schaefer with the reading of The Moth by Miroslav Holub. Thanks to Claudia for coming in and talking to us about the moth and indeed for giving us permission to share the conversation with you. Thanks also to Blood Axe Books for their permission in allowing us to feature the poem in this way and indeed to the translators whose work has allowed us to enjoy this poem and many others in the fantastic collection in which the moth appears, which is called Poems Before and After. And if you look on the description page, there's a link to Blood Axe website where you can find a copy of Poems Before and After and you can buy one of your very own. And there really are some fantastic poems in that collection, so we do encourage you to go and take a look there. 
We're going to be taking a different rhythm over the next few months and weeks. We're going to be focusing on some live events here in the UK, but we will be continuing to put the podcast out, but it'll be once a month rather than once every two weeks. We want to leave you with something new. There's a new layer to the Poetry Exchange that we're adding in, where we're going to be inviting poets to write in response to the nominations. So in a sense, the conversations and the poem that the visitors bring in will act as a source material for a new poem to be created. And to get that going, I'm going to read one that I've created in response to the conversation you've just heard with Claudia about the moth. Adaptation Czechoslovakia, 1976 A man is shuttered away in a laboratory. He stares down the lens of a microscope into the peppercorn eyes of a moth. At night, words fall through him like particles that cluster and mutate in spiralling patterns. Nemuse you vreit, nemuse you vreit, nemuse you vreit. Every 22 hours, the moth hangs in its pupa, waiting for the blood to fall and for the wind and the currents. Columbia, 2011. A woman is kept in a jar. The jar is kept in darkness. The darkness is blacker than her eyes. Inside herself, she dreams she is a girl running barefoot with a net in the garden. Creello, creello, creello. Somewhere between thought and dream, between decades and hemispheres and species, the edge of belief begins like a wing that trembles and then lifts.